Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing neuroplasticity. Before we get into the video, if you liked our video, make sure to subscribe to the Demystifying Medicine YouTube channel. What is neuroplasticity? Neuro means the nervous system, which includes the brain, spinal cord, and nerves. Plasticity means easily changeable, adaptable, or modifiable. Neuroplasticity is the brain's ability to adapt and form new connections and pathways because of its lived experiences and environment. These brain changes can be caused by new information, physical and mental stress, development, or stimuli. Responses to these changes can be positive, such as restoring function after an injury, negative, such as dysfunctional consequences, or neutral, no change in response. Neuroplasticity is important because it allows humans to continuously develop, learn and form new memories, and recover from brain injuries. How does neuroplasticity work? Well, let's use an example. Think of when you first start riding a bike. At first, it seems really difficult because you were experiencing something for the first time. However, the more time you spend developing the skill, the better you get at performing it, as with many other skills that you learn every day. In contrast, there are many skills that we learned as children, such as speaking other languages, that we slowly forget over time if we don't practice them. This is essentially a neuroplasticity at work. The brain will continue to evolve as we learn new things, build connections over time to help us perform skills better, while simultaneously getting rid of connections we may not use anymore. Our environment plays a large role in determining how our brain's connections evolve. An environmental factor that could reduce neuroplasticity is stress. Recent scientific studies suggest that chronic unhealthy stress can turn off certain genes that are important for promoting neuroplasticity. This means that the gene will not be active and carry out its function. In contrast, an environmental factor that could promote neuroplasticity is physical activity. Physical activity has been proven to promote the development of these connections by providing the brain with the tools it needs to facilitate these positive changes. The use of strength training to promote neuroplasticity, specifically in populations with mild cognitive impairment, or MCI, is a budding area of research in the field of neuroplasticity. Mild cognitive impairment occurs when individuals experience a decline in their memory or thinking skills. This process is typically accelerated with age and other clinical conditions, such as dementia and Alzheimer's disease, often progress from mild cognitive impairment. The distinction between MCI and dementia or Alzheimer's disease are made based on the level of impact these cognitive changes have on one's daily life. Individuals with MCI might find that they forget the name of their best friend or have trouble planning activities. In contrast, dementia and Alzheimer's disease patients can have trouble carrying conversations, doing daily activities such as getting dressed, and might get lost or wander. It is now known that MCI often appears years before an official dementia diagnosis. Research has found that individuals with MCI already have ongoing decreases in the size of their hippocampus, the part of the brain that is responsible for memory and learning, which can worsen and progress into Alzheimer's disease. The use of endurance training to promote hippocampal neuroplasticity in older adults with mild cognitive impairment has been studied and has led to mixed results. Currently, new research is being done to explore progressive resistance training as an alternative to endurance training and has been shown to result in preventing the breakdown of the hippocampus and preserving good connections in the brain thus improving cognition in those with MCI. These effects are clear after six months of high-intensity resistance training and continue to be seen at least 12 months after the end of intervention. Therefore, early prevention in the breakdown of this part of the brain could help prevent the downward cascade to dementia and possibly to Alzheimer's disease. 
However, more research needs to be done to explore different strength training regimens in this population of patients. Thank you for watching.